So this is a question from an old SAT practice test from before it went digital when it was still the paper exam. So I used to teach this question a lot because it, it was a hard one. Most of my students would just give up and guess randomly. And honestly, my advice to them at the time was just, don't worry about it. This is a question that's not worth your time. It was a fine skip. But obviously, I'm going to tell you how to do it. But it, it always drove me nuts because it was one that that just, it, it's very hard to explain. Now, one thing that I try to do whenever I'm faced with a hard SAT question is I try to identify the topic. Because if I can identify the topic, that usually gives me a plan. Because the SAT is very repetitive, right? If I see certain kinds of questions, I'm going to do certain kinds of things. So as I'm reading this, I, I'll kind of show you what I would pick up as maybe the topic to focus on. Alan drives an average of 100 miles each week. His car can travel an average of 25 miles per gallon of gasoline. Alan would like to reduce his weekly expenditure on gasoline by $5, assuming gasoline costs $4 per gallon, which equation can Alan use to determine how many fewer average miles M he should drive each week. There's a lot of units in this question. So I might want to just think of it as a unit conversion question, and I have a method for that. I do the table method. So I focus first on whatever rate that I see in the question. The most obvious one to me is 25 miles per gallon. So okay, 25 miles, and I'm going to draw my table, per one gallon, right? So now I need to eliminate a unit. So I want either miles or gallons, and I want to put it on the other side. So, so what do I see? Well, I see here that gasoline costs $4 per gallon. So let's throw that in, right? So one gallon costs $4. So now the gallons goes away. The whole point of this method is we get the same unit on the left, same unit on the right. We can cross it out. When all of our units are crossed out, we know we have all the numbers we need in the right place. So I also know I'm going to want that M because, uh, well, that's what I'm solving for. So the M miles is going to go here. And that's maybe the hardest part because we also have 100 miles as some sort of number here, but we don't actually ever need that. That is just completely irrelevant information, which is very rare for the SAT to do, so it makes me nervous to leave it behind, but we don't need it. But if we get rid of miles, we'd really love to get rid of dollars. So let's, this is where you have to kind of think through the question a bit, and, and, and the unit conversion really helps me see what I want. I want dollars. I see $5 right here. Can I relate that $5 to this M miles? Well, he wants to drive uh, M fewer miles per week, and that is going to save him $5, right? So M miles cost $5 that he's going to save. So that's the relationship. That is a rate. And now the dollars cross out and we have all of our, our units gone. So now we can just multiply down. And so if I do that, I'm going to have 4M on this side. And this is where maybe looking at the answer choices and, and keeping track of what you're looking for can help because you, you could multiply 5 and 25 and I'll, I'll do that in a second, but you could also just kind of keep them separate for a sec and recognize, hey, I need to make this look like one of those equations. I've got a 4M, right? And so what, what can I do here? Well, if I divide both sides by 25, right, what would I end up with? M uh, times 4 25ths, M times 4 25ths equals five. It's D, right? So you don't actually need to solve for anything, but out of habit, you might. So let's, let's kind of do that just to show you. Uh, so if I did kind of finish the job here, uh, five times 25 is 125. And then we would divide by four to actually get a value of M. So 125 divided by four is 31.25. And now this becomes a little bit of a, a plug points into equations question. We can just take that value of M put it into all these equations and see which one fits with that point. And, and again, it'll be D. But this is where we also had another option from the start, which is more of like a guess and check situation. Normally, when they give us equations and the answer choices, they're two variable equations. They're X's and Y's. And, and so we can't solve the equation. It's, it's got too many unknowns. But these are all equations with just one missing letter we could solve all of them. In fact, it's weird that they didn't ask us for the value of M because as you can see, we can, we can get it. We can also get it from the answer choices. And so there's kind of a version of this where you just like see what happens with the value of M. So I'm going to show you that because I, I really like it. This is the kind of guess and check method. So we already know what the M is supposed to be, but even if we didn't, watch what happens, right? So how would I solve for M? I'd multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So 4 over 25. So this is going to give me M equals... 95 times 4 divided by 25, 
So he has to drive 15.2 miles to save $5, right? $5 costs 15.2 miles. But that's weird because 25 miles is one gallon of gasoline and one gallon of gasoline is $4. So if $4 costs 25 or is 25 miles, why would $5 be only 15.2 miles, right? The number doesn't make sense. And if we keep going, you'll see it, it gets even worse. So four over 25, four over 25, right? So this is gonna be M is 20 divided by 25. So I should have done that, that's 0.8. So he's gotta drive less than a mile, less than uh, to get to what? $5 saved, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, it doesn't work. So multiply here by the reciprocal, 25 over four, 25 over four, this is gonna be insane. 95 times 25 divided by four, I'm getting 593.75. So that's way more miles than he even drives. So no, it doesn't make any sense. And we do the same thing here, 25, four, 25, four, five times 25 divided by four is exactly what we'd expect, 31.25. And that's because we solved it before. You can even see the math is the same, right? 25 times five and then divided by four. But, but even if we hadn't solved it, Choice D is the only thing that makes any sense, right? Because again, 25, according to the story, 25 miles is going to cost $4, right? So if he's trying to save $5, he's got to be driving more than 25 miles or it's fewer, but you get what I'm saying, right? So he's got to be going more than 25 miles to cut that $5, but only Choice D really does that in any way that makes sense, right? C is way out there and A and B are too low. So we could just estimate this. That's such a weird way of doing it, but I like it because it just goes to show that, I don't know, at the end of the day, there isn't necessarily the kind of like textbook math solution to every question that you might want. I feel like both things that I did here are kind of just like, do whatever you can and hope it works and see what's going to happen and, and just try different things. And that's a skill that you really need for the SAT is just try stuff, see what happens. You don't really know what's going to happen, but sometimes the, the best way to solve it is to try something and then learn from whatever you get out of it. And if you're resistant to that, if you need to the type of person who needs to have a plan, who needs to know every single step before you start you're never gonna succeed on the SAT to the level that you might want because you, you can't be that inflexible. You need to be creative. You need to be a risk taker. So I think this question kind of shows that off. And, and even after all these years of teaching it, there's a little place in my heart there. Like, I get it. This is kind of like a quintessential SAT question. It's a nice little puzzle that only people who are creative and clever can solve.